what happened, why happened, and what will happen. Um, I think that's just very easy way of putting it. Yeah. So thank you for your time today. Really, really appreciate it. So one of the most popular videos on my channel is actually a video about you, um, a senior <laughs> business intelligence engineer at Amazon. And, um, you know, I, I realized that there's just so many people interested in the BI uh, function and the data family. Um, so that I thought maybe I should invite you as uh, again uh, to kind of elaborate and then explain a little bit more about, you know, what are the different functions and roles within the data family that would probably include you know, your role as a business intelligence engineer um, and also data scientists and also like data engineers. Yeah, glad to glad to be here. I, I find it quite interesting that so many people are interested in, in this topic because obviously it's, it's near and dear to me. It's, it's what I do on a day to day. Uh, for me, it's really interesting to break down the data data analytics, data engineering, business analytics, business intelligence analytics, business intelligence engineering, all of that space falls under what I would call data, right? Mm -hmm. It's all data at the end of the day. Uh, and then from there, it's how the data is, and is being used. So for me, there's data analysts or business intelligence analysts, if you want to bucket mm -hmm. them. I'm going to put them in the same. We're just going to call them analysts for right now. Sure. For me, there's data engineering, <clears throat> business intelligence engineering. There is a little bit of a segmentation there, and we'll go over the differences here in a second. Uh -huh. And then data scientists. And so those are the three buckets. So analysts are explaining why did the things happen and by using the data available at their fingertips, identify underlying trends, and most often that lead to new discoveries or new, new understandings. And as, as it, use the data you have, figure out, figure out what the next steps are. Data engineering and business, inte <clears throat> business intelligence engineering, BI engineering is what happened. And really, both data engineering and BI engineering are involved in making this information known to their end users, but they're involved in, I'd almost say, the 1A and the 1B parts. And we'll talk about that here again as I break it down. And then data scientists are what will happen. So they're using this data that is often more often not procured by the data, data engineers and business intelligence engineers to predict what will happen. They use models. And so I'll explain that in a second. But to me, that, that's the three families. So we have analysts, we have engineering, and we have scientists and how data gets used. For me, it all really starts with the data engineers and the business intelligence engineers. What happened? How can you tell, how can you do any analysis if you don't know what happened, right? Sure. So we got to start, start the baseline. And data engineering, I'm not going to paint the pictures of, of data engineering and in, in, in its entirety with the most important part start the starting part in my opinion for this type of analysis being data warehousing so somewhere to process and house all the data for the system uh you often you you know will hear of a wa warehousing or data lakes or uh s3s as you know is a is a way to store the data but then you gotta take that data and process it and put it somewhere else so you know aws is a ton of ton of uh at home applications that let you do all of that and so when we take the data from the data warehouse there are things you have to do such as procuring it sometimes you have to get that most of the time you have to get that data from another team another part of the enterprise mm -hmm. bring that data in from that part of the enterprise into a, a space that can be used by multiple people at my old job that could have been as far up as getting the data from the registers into a place that we can now analyze it and put it into a data warehouse for analysis you run on it at my at my job here at amazon I'll, it's a different system but it's a matter of getting data from different teams business intelligence is the other half of the engineering aspect so the uh, of what happened from there we often will need to compile multiple data sources, right? It might be data that we have in our data warehouse. They're all the enterprise level data, the really high quality data. But as, as you and I know, and as any other business person knows, there's often going to be Excel files or one-off text files or new data sources that haven't have been through the data warehousing process. So business intelligence is a bit more flexible in that regard. They're going to be willing to do some more data preparation on top of what's already being done in the data warehousing to compile multiple data sources, identify the different dimensions and, and really get things ready for data analysis. Maybe there'll be different levels of detail. So one data set is looking at things at a day and another data set's looking at a week. So if we want to do analysis across the two, we need to get both of them to be at the week level of detail and then we can talk at the same grain. 
So there's the different types of, of preparation that goes into play. And sometimes that preparation is also me working with an end user. What are you expecting here? Oh, I want to actually do this analysis at, at week. I want to do this at month. Okay, so that goes into how I go into preparing the data and figuring out the right data sources. In some cases, that just involves me writing a query. And most of the times, that's, that's the ideal state. I have an opportunity to write a query based on all the, da the data that's in the data warehouse, and now I can get it to the right level of detail that my, my end user wants, and I I'm off to the races with that. So there, there's a little, that, that piece right there is, can be, and what you'll hear more as I continue this conversation is, a lot of these pieces can be played by different elements. Could a data engineer write some queries to actually create data in a way that, that, that meets their end user's use case, but be a data engineer? Absolutely. Could I be doing some things that involve database administration as a business intelligence engineer? Sure. If my queries aren't running fast enough, I might go in there and tinker with some stuff. I do some data procurement as well. Like you said, with data, uh, like I said, with data preparation, sometimes that, that might involve me actually procuring some data and going through and doing data loads and things like that that a data engineer might do. But they're, the data engineers are more worried at, at a larger scale. They're doing more enterprise level uh, data movements, m large movements like that. More often than not, I will just leverage those data sets that they're bringing in. Anything that I'm creating for curing is either highly curated off of their data or me creating small one-off data sets to, to augment the reports that I, or the data sets that I'm creating. So they're, they're very highly specialized use cases and uh, unreal, uh, compared to the data engineers, which are very uh, open-ended use cases, they're not they're not so uh, customized. So that's that right there that's is the business intelligence and data warehousing will mm -hmm. have a lot going back and forth. But the one part of business intelligence I, I would say that is more focused purely for business intelligence is the reporting aspect of it. So uh -huh. in, in your case, you've, you've interacted a lot with the dashboards we've used. I've, I've used Excel reports. Mm -hmm. um, we've done Tableau dashboards, QuickSight dashboards, Power BI. I can keep na naming off power products out there. But at that point, a BI engineer would be involved with also creating some of these visualizations, descriptive analytics, gotcha. um, benchmarks, you know, creating metrics, benchmarking, all that good type of stuff with either the dashboarding or in some cases I could do that directly in my query writing to help create new metrics or create new uh, reference points. So I, I was working on a project like that recently where we mm -hmm. kind of created new metrics. And so that might be more in the business intelligence space than the, the data engineering gotcha. space. Gotcha. So that right there is what happened. We, we it, it's a lot going into that. It's not going into figuring out what it is. It's from getting the data, making sure it's right, getting it, it cleaned in an optimal state, making sure you have the right requirements from the end user, getting that into a, a usable state, and then putting it into something that the customer, or the end user, uh -huh. can use. Uh -huh. So that's kind of that middle space of, uh -huh. not middle space, but that first space of what happened and what can uh -huh. you do with that? What happened? Gotcha. Um, yeah, maybe moving on to the data science part. So actually, I, I was going to go to the, the, the analyst next. So that, to oh, me, okay. that's the, the next. Yeah, yeah. So after we've created the data and we've said, we have the data, what happened? Here's the, here are the facts. Analysts are answering why did these things happen by looking by using the data available to, them to, to, under, to identify underlying trends and lead to those new discoveries. No. So the thing with it, though, is an, the, the, the phrase analyst, business intelligence analyst, business analyst, what reporting analysts, whatever analysts, they're very open ended. And really the exact details of the job depend on the business you're supporting or the role that you're supporting. It's just it is, it is the nature of the beast with that with that title. More often than not, though, they will need to be able to do a, a both data analytics and business analytics. And with that, I mean, the business you work with will impact the data you use. And in turn, that data you should be used to impact the business you support. So you should be able to understand how the business and what the business you are about and you're supporting and what it's, a, what it's doing and the data that it can create what that data means and how it actually is related to that data. It's kind of a symbiosis you have to be able to be working in as you are looking at this data, understanding this data means X, Y, and Z, and how does that actually impact my business? It's, it's a, I, I guess without being actually in, in the, mm -hmm. in the weeds there, it, it's yeah. hard to have an example, but it's, uh, 
it's interesting, right? You, 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 you won't know until you get into that role and you won't know if you are, I'm, I'm not sure like a car enthusiast and become a car data analyst enthusiast. I don't know. Um, but it's one of those things that oftentimes you're going to find yourself again, having to learn something new. And so that's like, you have to learn either the business first and get really comfortable with the business and then understand mm -hmm. the data. I have always been a data person. So when I was in that type of role, I started with the data first, understanding the data and then and I ended up moving into the business. So, um, the most, another thing I want to share is the most successful analysts that I've worked with were well-versed in the language of their business that they support. And they were in tune with the needs of their business. Of course, it takes time, but that's, uh -huh. that's just from my experience. Gotcha. And, and the last part was the data science piece where they kind of predict what will happen in the future. Yes. Yes. And so oftentimes... Let me go back to the analysts. The analysts, though, are the one, they're the, they're the direct consumers of the, the, the data the business engineers and data engineers are creating. Uh -huh. And then from that, those analysts often are going to work with either the data engineers or the BI engineers to make new data, get new data, et cetera, or work with data scientists to uncover even new trends. Hey, I've noticed this trend over here, and can we maybe create a model for this and, and then bring new trends to light and come to new, create new understandings? Um, so that, like you just said, data scientists are trying to predict what will happen. And this is definitely a space where I'm going to misspeak. So I'm going to try to talk as, as careful as I can and make sure I don't say it wrong. Um, but they, the data scientists are trying to predict what will happen. And my, the way I understand it is they use modeling. And so they take a model and they will then apply different variables to it to come out with different outcomes. That sounds like a bunch of baloney when I say it out loud, but let me give you a, <laughs> let me give you a, 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 a rash or a realistic example of this. So before COVID, before we all had to go to work, we all worked with the same model. All of us had this model in our head. How long will it take me to get to work? We all had this model. Okay, it, on a good day, no traffic, 20 minutes. The second there's light traffic, so 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. The second it rains, it's in Seattle. No one can drive in the rain. It's a multiplier 1.5. So no matter whatever number it is, multiply 1.5. If I have to drop my wife off, take that time and add 10 minutes. So we knew instinctively what the model for uh -huh. how long does it take to get to work. Sure. This is a model you and I know. We've all played with this model. Data scientists, they do this as their job, but with everything. And I don't know any other way to explain gotcha. that. But that's how they yeah, I think it, it makes sense. It, it, it's my way of, of yeah. rationalizing data science. So like I, I have a math degree and I still sometimes I'm like, <laughs> like, I understand the math they're doing. I understand the, yeah. the concepts they're doing. So but like, so my understanding is that like, for example, if we're predicting the population of Korea, let's say, uh, we'll factor in, for example, the death rate, it will factor in like, what's the birth rate or factor in like, is there a chance of war happening? Like North Korea <laughs> coming down to South, for example, <laughs> you know, those kind of different stuff. And then kind of predicting the future using whatever existing data we have um, and by creating models. I think that's, yeah. that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. And, and it, Again, I'm I'm doing the data science community a disservice here. What they do is is fascinating, and I'd say I'm a magician. That is where the real magic is: is how they're able to take the they're able to take a simple concept of again. I know Vishesh's drive to work takes 25 minutes, and based on this these factors take 25 minutes. Based on the factors of now rain, it's taking 30 minutes, and so they just create this giant matrix of all the different variables, and then they apply. Now, instead of Vishesh driving, let's have his wife driving. And then what, what would all those factors now look like? How they do that, that's the part that I am just like, it, it amazes me how they can come to those outcomes. At the end of the day, though, with these machine learning, and so that machine learning is using a lot of these uh, pre, pre-derived algorithms that can, that's where data scientists really, are, you know, flex their muscle here, which algorithm is going to give us the best output to really understand the outcome that we want to go after. Mm -hmm. And will feel like they are predicting the future, and that's that's the sure. the awesomeness here of of when a, a data scientist have got the right data in front of them and created the right model, they really will be able to say, based on our past trends, we know there's a ninety percent chance that this is going to happen, and that's that's what data scientists really are able to do. The one thing I want to call out with data scientists too is they leverage a lot of the work being done by data engineering and data and BI engineering teams. Of course. And there's often a symbiosis and you can kind of tell, as I said, there's a symbiosis between all of these, but 
at the crux of it all is what happened. If you can't sure. get that data, but once sure. you have that out there, you have a lot of options available to you. Yeah, yeah. At Amazon, even, I've seen teams that are business a- intelligence analysts, BI engineers, data engineers, and data scientists. There are teams that will have all of those groups and uh-huh. all have different functions within, within that space. Is there any time where all these different family groups actually work together? Absolutely, yeah. Um, that's one of the points that I was going to make at the end that we would talk about right. when we get to data scientists. But um, there, there, there are definitely some trends across all of these job families here. One of the, I think the biggest trend that I want to call out is you have to be willing to learn constantly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Technically learn, business learn, right? business acumen type learning. Be curious about how things work. Um, I, I, I always laugh because uh, when I go work on a new project and I'm looking at something new and I have to become an expert on this and someone tells me if I, I'm not doing a good, I've never had anyone tell me, but if someone tells me I'm not doing a good job, it's like, how I'm, I have to come in and all of a sudden learn everything that you know in this, and this is your specialized use case. And so it's one of those things you have to be willing, like your ability to uptake new information and understand and process this is, is important. I'm not the fastest. But I know over time that I can definitely take in a lot of information. I think that's sure. where I excel, right? So that's one of the biggest things is being willing, to, willingness to learn, uh-huh. willingness to, to try new things is really important for anyone in the BI space, the data space. There's always new things coming at you, whether it's technological or business business changes that are, that are coming. Um, another thing that, that's really important for all of these spaces is like you just said, as they work together, you need to be willing to work with other people. You will never, more often than that, and I remind people that I work with, my job would not exist if you didn't exist. Mm-hmm. I'm here to support someone else yeah, doing yeah. their job function. And so if I need to be ready and willing to partner with people. If you have a hard time working with other people, all of these roles will not be for you because you're going to be required to collaborate and, and see other people's viewpoints and work really from... Most often than not, I have to take someone else's viewpoint and make it my own and I come up from their angle and understand where they're coming from so I can make sure I'm, I'm creating the best product possible for them. Mm-hmm. And all of, all of these roles would, would be the exact same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think that was, uh, that was great. Um, I, I think I learned a lot um, what happened, why happened, and what will happen. Um, I think that's just a very easy way of putting it. And thank you so much for explaining it um, to the audience today, Vishas. Really appreciate it. I, yeah. I sure will have you again to the show to explain different stuff uh, about you know, the area that you work on. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Jan. Awesome. Thank you.